I'm here at the Canton Museum of Art in Canton, Ohio to take a look at an example of pop art. No, it's not about this kind of pop, although maybe in a way it is. Pop art is a short way of saying popular art. Back in the 1950s, when pop art first hit the scene, life in the U.S. was structured and traditional. The art was too. Pop art was a revolution, a protest against all that. It was supposed to shock, and it did. Andy Warhol is the artist most people think of when you say pop art. He's done huge silk screens of everything from soup cans to celebrity faces. Sometimes there are repeated images of the faces, and it looks like you're looking at the individual frames of a movie. One of the Canton Museum of Art's specialties is artworks on paper. In a way, Warhol's Liz says more about us and our obsession with fame and celebrities than it does about her. We are a culture obsessed with acquiring things. But pop art just isn't about making statements. Its bold use of colors and strokes may not be shocking anymore, but it's still very popular. Chris Yember of Youngstown, Ohio, is also concerned with making underlying statements in his art. He uses pop art styles and techniques to create vivid portraits, using photographs, glass, and acrylic paints. Chris's portraits explode with color and contrast. Welcome to the world of pop art. These are old photographs of my wife Maureen and I. I'm going to take those photographs and I'm going to make what I call bride and groom paintings. Let's go. One of the first things that I have to do is I take this picture to a Xerox machine, any Xerox machine that you can get your hands on, and I try to enlarge it. This is enlarged about, uh, I'd say, 200%, maybe 220%. What happens is, is it breaks it down to black whites and a secondary gray. This image is then turned into an acetate overlay sheet. Never throw glass away, never, never, ever. This one happens to be from a coffee machine, but do I care about this? The little writing and everything on the side? No, 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 it's more fun this way. I drop it straight down, flatten it out a little bit, then I grab the picture of my wife, which we did the same way. She's much prettier in person. This is a burnisher. Basically, it's a flat piece of plastic that you can do this. What you're doing is you're, you're trying to push out all the air bubbles and give this thing the tightest fit it possibly can have to the glass. Now we're ready to paint. With Pop Artists, we're not blending any colors here. I don't blend colors. I just go right to it. Remember, you're painting on the back of the glass. The other nice thing about working with acrylics are that acrylics are liquid plastics and you can go over things if, you, if you're not happy with them almost immediately. You can pick any colors you like. That's the rule. And if you like, you could paint all the lines. I like that. Okay, we're going to do the jewelry right here. So now I'm putting in what I call a shadow color. What this shadow color does is I go over all the gray areas and I go just a little bit outside of the gray areas, cover that up a little bit. A little bit of eye makeup on her. And it's not, a, it's not essential that this, is, that this is completely filled in. We're still having fun. Now what's cool about this is even though the, it may seem to be all solid black and, and white, there's all kinds of highlights in our hair. All kinds of little highlights and it's okay to go outside the lines because it, it just looks cool. Okay, now we can't even see their faces anymore from this angle. But that's okay because this angle has, has done its job. Got to do a little bit more color in my hair. I think some bozo orange should do it. I want to keep it close. Again, I'm not afraid to go outside of the lines, that's for sure. See all that orange? And all I got was a little bit of flaking. A little bit of orange just in the highlights of the hair that nobody's going to see except me. This is a spiteful use of blue. There's no blue anywhere else on this thing. What we're going to try to do now is we're going to try to pull these two images together pull the backgrounds together too on these. See how these colors are mixing? That's completely accidental. That's not what I do. That just happens. So remember, art happens. I'm liking it a lot. I'm digging it even. Now, what I want to do is I want to pop that fluorescent color off even more. So, time for some spray paint. Don't use this unless, any type of spray paint, unless you're in a well-ventilated area. Now this thing spits, okay? It doesn't give me a smooth surface, which is exactly what I want. If I put blue, 
or any dark color really, behind that yellow, what's going to happen is that it's going to cause that yellow to pop right out of there. I'm going through and I'm dabbing the excess paint, and if it smears, it's okay. And I'm also leaving a secondary pattern of that color, whatever colors pick up, clear through the painting. We want to throw some movement in there, so we're just going to tear up some of the paint. Good, maybe a little bit more scratching. I'm going to go into the areas I just scratched, fill part of that in with a, a real bright yellow. I'm liking that. Lots of yellow tension. See all the scratch marks and everything even across my goofy little face? That's going to work out all right. Now any scratches that we missed are getting filled in with black. Then you take a 10 minute coffee break. I think most young painters are afraid to take risks with their work. You're young. You're supposed to take the risks now. Have fun. Accidents will happen if you're in the proper place for them to exist. They will happen. Accidents are your friend. There you go. And those immortal words. It is finished. Because the techniques of pop art are free-flowing and experimental, it is an especially fun art form to explore. In particular, creating pop art portraits provides opportunities to play with color. The students of Southington High School, borrowing from the techniques of Chris Yamber, create portraits of themselves. So everybody got Photoshop up and running? Next, I think we're going to turn it into black and white, and then we adjust how much uh, our face turns out and how dark everything is, and uh, pretty much just play with it, how dark we want it and stuff. Uh, using the Photoshop filters to affect your image, it's just another way to use a computer to create a picture that does what you need it to do. Computers are just tools. You are still the artist. I think a little darker is a little better. That's good. That's nice. That's good, yeah. Click OK and get to the print. You have to also decide, do you want your picture to look this way or do you want your picture to look this way? You want to paint the shadows around the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the neck. Where'd you get that? Anything you write, you have to write backwards. Does everybody remember that? I like how you can, you don't have to be exact about it. You can just smear paint over like this. You just smear it over the back and since there's lines on the front it comes out you can only see through the holes in the film. Mike found out that if you want to remove some of the transparency ink, if you scratch through at the back of the uh, paintbrush, you want to move, you want to get more of your hair to show through, go ahead and scratch off some of that ink. And it, you've done all this beautiful work here. You kind of want to let people focus here instead of distracting them with something else. Yeah. Let it be a little calmer here so they really can see what's happening in your hair. All right. This is double stick tape. There's adhesive on both sides, so you want to keep it, your fingerprints, to a minimum. So let's get two pieces of tape on each side of each corner. We also want to think about this space back here. What are you going to do with it? How? How are you going to break up that space? Are you going to do anything concrete? Or are you going to keep it non-objective? Are you going to put some objects in there? Are you going to put something recognizable back there? Are you going to turn yourself into a cartoon character? What are you going to do? Could you always wash this off? Yes. Well, I'm 
putting the lines in the direction of my hair so it like follows the curves. And I'm going to fill it in with um, teal and orange. She's ready just to coat the back. What I want you to do with this is fill that brush and just start sealing up the back with the black paint. And you'll notice that it starts to really pop out. Her, some of her scratch marks starts to let less light come through and you really start to see the colors really start to coming out. To use these scribble paints, use them to accent. Don't use them to color in whole areas. Use them as an accent. Use them to give more definition to a place that you would like more people to notice. art with its wild use of color and broad splashy strokes caused quite a stir in the 60s and 70s. It was a response to what the young people thought of as crass commercialism. It was new, it was bright, it was fun. And it's still a wonderful expression of people and culture. Teaching materials for sharing art are available on the web at wneo.org slash sharing art. Funding for this series was provided by the Martha Holden Jennings Foundation and Northeastern Ohio Education Association. NEOEA's members include elementary and secondary teachers, university professors, and support professionals proudly serving students attending the public schools and colleges of Northeastern Ohio.